Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session. Um, I'm Michael Hutchings from the University of California, Berkeley. I'm very happy to introduce our speaker, Professor Hiroshi Iritani, who will speak on de about on decompositions of quantum cohomology D modules. And for technical reasons, we won't be able to take questions during the talk. If you have any questions, please reach out to Professor Iritani by email. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, I'm very honored to give a talk in this occasion. So, uh, yes, so, uh, yeah. So I'm going to talk about the composition of quantum cohomology D modules. This is uh, the topic I have been studying for years. And uh, for, about this topic, I learned many things from my collaborators and uh, colleagues, and also from my teachers and from my students too. So I'd like to thank all of them. So um, yes, uh, so the, the topic of my talk is uh, decomposition. And some of this, uh, one theme is that uh, we can see certain topological structure underlying quantum cohomology. So quantum cohomology is uh, obviously, uh, by definition, it is certain uh, topological object because uh, it is uh, in the sense that it is invariant and the deformation of complex structures. So it is topological, but there are certain, uh, another topological structure related to the functoriality of quantum cohomology and the, for example, birational transformations. So uh, this is a little bit more hidden structure, but uh, maybe I'd like to talk about that somehow the certain topological structure related to the K group, topological K group, some of governs certain functoriality, maybe the, at least as a conjecture. So, um, so actually most, most of my talk will be a review of the previous works. And maybe at the last moment, I will give uh, my, or our latest recent progress. So, um, so let us begin with the quantum cohomology. Definition of quantum cohomology. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm not going to give a definition, but just a feeling about quantum cohomology. So quantum cohomology was first defined in physics by Witten and uh, topological sigma model. And uh, uh, there was also related work by Gromov on pseudo homophy curves. And uh, mathematically, uh, the first definition of quantum cohomology was given by Ruan and Tien. And later, there was also an idea by Konsevich on stable maps, and there are lots of works on this. And uh, so maybe we can start with a compact symplectic manifold. Compact symplectic manifold, or if you like, smooth projective ride. Then, uh, then I can define some family of rings. Uh, family of commutative rings. Uh, some, uh, super commutative rings uh, called the quantum cohomology. This is called quantum cohomology. And here, uh, this CQ as a group, as a vector space, this is just a cohomology group with coefficients in certain. Novkov ring, something called Novkov ring. That is a completion of the completion of the group ring of effective curves. Completion of if, uh, the group ring of H two, uh, consisting of effective classes, effective uh, J holomorphic spheres. And uh, uh, this product is a super competitive uh, associated product structure depending on tau. Here, tau, this tau, tau lies in the homology again, the so called the big quantum homology. And yes, and, and, and this is a deformation of a cup product. So, I take a limit as q goes to zero and tau goes to zero. 
these parameters are set to be zero, it will be a top product. So in this sense, this is a deformation of a stop homology ring. Yes, and maybe I, I, I'm not going to give a precise definition, but this is defined in terms of Gromovic Witten invariance. And uh, maybe I can just give you uh, a feeling. Since in front of Q to the D of alpha star zero beta and gamma, where alpha, beta, gamma are homology classes. And this pairing is this is a Poincare pairing. Poincare pairing. And the coefficient q to the d of d is a somehow this element of a effective curve of this quantity is the virtual count following J homomorphic curves. So I have cycles A, B, and C, which are dual to alpha, beta, gamma. And then I count the number of degree D J holomorphic curves. Degree D, degree D J holomorphic. The number of uh, degree DJ holds the curves intersecting A, B, C. They are dual cycles of alpha, beta, gamma. So this is a, a definition, rough definition of quantum homology at prime to zero. And maybe you, you see that uh, if somehow, if I set Q to zero, there are only degree zero contribution survive. So therefore I'm only counting points, degree zero holomorphic curve is just a point. So I'm just accounting the triple intersection points. And therefore this is just uh, the, the deformation of top product. Okay, so this is just a very rough definition. Maybe I'll give one example, simple example, which maybe I will generalize later. So, uh, if you consider the quantum cohomology, actually quantum cohomology of PN was the first example computed. So for example, we then computed P1, quantum cohomology of P1 in this paper. This is uh, the following presentation. So uh, this has the following. It is generated by two elements P and Q with, the, with this relation, P to the N plus one minus Q being zero. So, um, so where P corresponds to the hyperplane class. Hyperplane class. And maybe geometrically you can see, so if I take the spectrum of this ring, and this is just n plus one point. It's like the n plus one points or or q non zero. And if I set q to zero, this will give you the classical cohomology ring, and this will give corresponds to the third point. So, there is a family of varieties that degenerate into a fat point. If it goes zero, this is a... This is a geometric picture of one, uh, maybe some, some un, another geometric picture of quantum homology. And uh, um, maybe this is actually one instance of decomposition of quantum cohomology. Quantum cohomology in this case is just seems simple will be a direct sum of uh, C, n plus one direct sum of C. Okay, this is a, a definition of quantum cohomology. No, not a definition, sorry, but uh, 
hearing about quantum homology. So the quantum cohomology, there is a rich structure, some integrable structure in quantum cohomology, and that can be uh, uh, summarized in terms of the D module structure. So one uh, object of study is quantum D module, which is just a flat connection. Um, this is a flat connection. Um, that connection on this trivial bundle. This is just a trivial bundle with fiber cohomology. And uh, I write down Z as an element on the base. If I write a uh, tau like this, with phi, phi i being a basis of homology and tau i being the coordinates, then uh, the connection will be of the following form. The precise form of the connection is not, not very important in this talk, but just I want to give you And uh, this is a connection in the tau i direction, and the connection in the z direction. Maybe, actually, not all the ingredient is not explained, but. Um, e here is something important. This is a, something called Euler vector field. And maybe I, I, I'm, not, you, I'm not going to give a full definition, but this is roughly speaking the Fashion plus of X and plus some corrections. Right? Some corrections. Right. But it is very easy to write, but just it's not so important. So I'm omitting. And the mu. Mu, this is an endomorphism of cohomology and uh, given by the formula. We are i. That's half of the complex image of x. This is the grading operator. And this is certain explicit connection. So it, it given by quantum multiplication. And uh, uh, maybe non-trivial fact is that this is flat. So this follows from the associativity of quantum cohomology. And uh, yeah, so I, I introduced certain integral structure underlying quantum D module. That is called gamma integral structure. Is uh, introduced by uh, by myself, and uh, uh, yeah, to be more precise, they consider cut off quantum, considered rational structure, but the you know, essentially the same structure. Um, so this is the following thing. So I, this is because this is a flood connection. So you have certain local system of solutions of flood sections. And I want to consider certain lattice in the space of flood sections. So um, the lattice given by the topological K group X. So, um, so this is a vector space. This is just a C vector space. 
because just if I somehow assume, for example, the convergence of quantum cohomology, maybe I, I didn't mention, but uh, it is believed that quantum cohomology is convergent and you have set some a nice analytic connection on the base space. And uh, uh, yeah, so I'm considering the space of flat sections. This is C vector space, and I, I want to consider a lattice inside it. And uh, yes, uh, more precisely, I this is not lattice because I'm only considering even part uh, K zero. Maybe I could also consider K one topological K one, which may be interesting, but I don't fully understand the relevance of the K one in this story. So it would be interesting to know more about the K one. But uh, for the time being, I'm just considering even part of the quantum cohomology, even part of the flat sections, and then consider lattice inside the lattice inside it. So the, maybe I, I'm going to give a formula how this, this lattice is given. So for any vector bundle V, I assign flat section SV, depending on tau Z, and such that if I restrict the tau Z equal one, will be have the following asymptotics. Precise uh, definition may be not relevant, but uh, I'm sorry, something. Uh, okay. So uh, this is essentially Chan character and, and some modification of two pi modification and the multiply by the, the so-called gamma class. Uh, so, sorry, as tau. So uh, I assign, I consider a flat section that has this asymptotics as Q tau goes to zero, zero. Maybe I, I, I'm going to explain what this, this gamma class is. Uh, uh, as you explain, where, This is certain characteristic class defined for any almost complex manifold. It is a where delta one to delta n are channel roots of tangent bundle of x, so that the total charm class of x. Is so uh, maybe this is something um, something people are familiar in characteristic class theory. So uh, so delta i's are channel roots, which are not cohomology class, but only virtual classes. But uh, each channel classes are elementary symmetric functions of delta one to delta n. And because this is, uh, and I, I consider this, this is a actually formal power series in delta one to delta n, and this gamma is a usual gamma function, Euler's gamma function, and I uh, somehow consider the Taylor expansion at one of the gamma functions, and then this will give you certain formal power series symmetric in delta one to delta n. So they give certain cohomology class because they can be rewritten in terms of the elementary symmetric functions. So this will give you a homology class with R coefficients. Because uh, this is not rational coefficients because the gamma function uh, contains zeta values. Uh, the Taylor expansion of gamma functions contains zeta two, zeta three, zeta four, and the Riemann zeta functions values. And so uh, this is not defined over Q. This is only defined over R uh, and also contains transcendental numbers. 
like pi. So um, this is a slightly strange class, but this is relevant here so in this lattice structure. Yeah, so maybe pe people may wonder why I, I consider this. And uh, uh, the one reason is that I can, uh, one reason I can give is a hiltable free Morot formula. Uh, so maybe remember that if I have two holomorphic vector bundle, V1, V2, and then take the Euler characteristic, the alternating sum of the dimension of X of V1, V2, and this, this will be uh, this is a of formula set that will be chan character of v one v o chan character of v two times r of class of x. Okay. This is a classical formula, and this formula, and actually this gamma class playing the role of a, a square root of the part class, so that uh, you can you can have the following. You can show the following very easily. I take a plumper pairing of I need to change the sign of z here, then this will be a uh, integer. So this will be the characteristics of the particular integer. Actually, this is integer for any any topological vector bundle because uh, because in a non-holomorphic case, this can be also written as a certain index of a Dirac operator. So um, yes, so this is lattice and the pairing is preserved. But note that, that this Euler pairing, Euler pairing is neither symmetric nor uh, anti-symmetric, unless X is Calabria or something. So uh, this is uh, something uh, lattice, but the pairing is not necessarily not necessarily symmetric or anti-symmetric. And wh why so? Why this holds? Maybe I didn't explain. So why gamma class gives you this? Because uh, the gamma functions because of the following identity of gamma. Function. This is a famous identity. Delta minus two pi delta. So minus pi delta. So, um, so this this part gives you a uh, tot class. So gamma class uh, multiplied by the kind of dual gamma class will give you a thought class. And this explains somehow uh, part of the reason why I need gamma class. But this is not the whole reason because uh, if you can somehow cook up such the property, somehow the function satisfying this property easily, you can somehow multiply by any odd function, I guess. So, uh, uh, so this is not quite a reason, but uh, there's another reason I'm considering this structure. So that is, uh, I only remark, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about much about mirror symmetry, but uh, mirror symmetry gives you certain reasons. So, so you expect that the gamma integral structure corresponds to natural Z structure. Natural Z structure on the other side. So for instance, if I consider a mirror symmetry for Calabial manifolds, then the quantum cohomology on one side or quantum demology on one side corresponds to the variation of the Hodge structure on the dual mirror dual Calabial manifolds. And the variation of Hodge structure on the mirror dual Calabial manifolds has a natural Z structure. And I expect, uh, and I checked in many examples that they match up. So um, gamma integral structure corresponds to natural integral structure in many cases. 
And maybe I, I wonder, somehow this is a question you guys, we could ask. The gamma integral structure corresponds to the topological K group. And maybe we should probably consider a mere symmetry for K group. And, and then there may be some relationship between the K group of the dual and the certain integral structure on the neural variation hash structure. But I, I don't, I haven't studied this very well, but uh, it would be interesting to study from this point of view. So now, now I, my main point of my talk, the composition. So, um, so first I'll just give you a very abstract setting of the composition. parameter on the base. Uh, Q is uh, not a variable, tau is a point in the base. And uh, then recall that maybe, recall that this connection, there was this connection, this connection was uh, this form. This has pole order two as z equals zero. So um, it has irregular similarity. Because uh, in general has irregular similarity because uh, this has pole order two. If it is pole order one, then this is a logarithmic connection and it is regular singular, but uh, pole order two, so it can be irregular. And in the irregular case, uh, there is something interesting phenomenon called the Stokes phenomenon and, uh, for this connection. And first, I, I want to study. Uh, uh, and the decomposition I'm going to talk about is related to the Stokes phenomenon. So first we consider, have to consider a formal type. Formal type of this connection at z equals zero. Formal type. So what is a formal type? So we consider the following assumption. So the following assumption. So I just consider restricted the formal neighborhood of z equals zero and uh, consider this connection. This connection. And this will be decomposed. If I formalize in Z, then we will be decomposed into the following pieces. U varies over certain complex numbers. So let us assume this. So this assumption is called, uh, so yeah, this assumption has been introduced by And the seven hex, and uh, also the aforementioned of, of catalog of conservation. So, um, so this this assumption is called uh, sometimes no ramification. So um, these are assumptions are called so because, yeah, uh, there's uh, in general, so there are some general theory of uh, ordinary differential equation, how they decompose formally. And uh, um, there's something called the Kohara Turitin theorem. And in general, in order to have this kind of decomposition, you, uh, uh, maybe I, I'm sorry, I haven't explained what, what, what in this decomposition. Sorry, where? where? Uh, where u is uh, eigenvalues of so this part, eigenvalue of this comes here, and uh, r u uh, 
U, I'm sorry, maybe this one. E to the U on Z. This is the rank one connection. Rank one connection. Z minus U over T square. And R U, R U, this is a regular singular connection. Connection. So uh, this is a free ABC module. With regular singular. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, called non ramification or exponential type. And uh, in the theory of ordinary differential equation, you have this kind of decomposition, usually after taking a ramified cover. So after considering this kind of ramified cover, R, R for ramified cover, then you get this type of decomposition. It is a coherent type theorem. And, uh, but uh, here, the assumption said that we only take, we can take R to be one. So this is assumption, and maybe we can believe this if we believe mirror symmetry, for example. We expect this because of mirror symmetry, for instance. And uh, some conjecture called the Robin type conjecture. Robin type conjecture due to the Anishamoto. And the version I'm going to present here is, was suggested to me by Sergei Galkin. And uh, yeah, so, uh, so obviously this is uh, this originates from the Robin conjecture. And also there was a so related to come from the Robin conjecture. And also related conjecture is gamma conjecture, which uh in, yeah, myself. Uh, this, maybe you can think of this as a special case of more general, but slightly different, but yeah, and roughly speaking, special case of this conjecture. So, um, yes, so I, I, I just assume this, this is an assumption. And uh, then pick an admissible direction. The I phi on the complex plane it is some direction in that complex plane. As admissible means that it is not parallel. It is not parallel to any difference of the eigenvalues. So it is generic generic condition. And uh, then the, then this formal. Then this is not a conjecture, this is just a fact, again called the Fukuhara Turing theorem. Then the formal decomposition, the above formal decomposition. Lifts. And analytic decomposition. Of our sector. So, uh, so sector will be this direction. The sector will be this, and uh, it's, uh, so that uh, yeah, maybe I just re erase.
So of a certain sector, maybe the sector of angle greater than I have this decomposition. And yes, uh, and then, then uh, this induces, this is analytic, this is defined of analytic functions, and this induces a uh, uh, decomposition. Of K groups. K groups. Because this is a, a, a isomorphism analytic, con analytic connections, and this has a, a integral structure, gamma integral structure. Like this. And the conjecture says that this uh, is an integral subspace. Uh, the Robin type conjecture. So the original case of the Robin, uh, so RU is just rank one trivial connection. And so this will split into just dark sum of C. And uh, the Robin father uh, conjecture that uh, this the composition corresponds to uh, uh, exceptional collection is given by a choice of exceptional collection in derived category. Uh, although he didn't talk about gamma plus in the in his regional conjecture. Yes. So maybe this is a general general decomposition. And I, I maybe I want to somehow I'd be interested in the question, the, the following question, what is the geometric meaning of VU? So what, what are they? So what are the geometric meaning? So so I'm a little So maybe I, I just then I come back to a geometric situations. Then see in some cases we see those components, uh, regular singular components in terms of geometry. So um, so uh, let x one and x two are related by rational transformations. Piece of a rational map. And the F and G are birational morphisms. And I'm, I'm now assuming that everything is smooth projective varieties here. And uh, so this friend the pullback of the canonical class are the same. This is, in this case, uh, it is conjectured that quantum cohomology or quantum D module of X and X2 are related by analytic continuation. This is something called the Ruins conjecture. This is a conjecture by Ruan. But now, now, if we consider the case, uh, for example, this is bigger. In this case, I want to expect uh, decomposition. So um, maybe quantum more about x one is equal to d of x two plus something. Maybe at least on the formalized level, so completed level. Okay. So maybe I, I give one example. Um, sorry to interrupt, but there are about five minutes left. Mm -hmm. Sorry? About five minutes left. Oh, okay, five. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, one example where. Uh, so I consider blow up. I and also I. This is, I consider blow up of P4 along a linear P1 line. And then there is a map projection from P1 to P2. This, this is a map pi, which is a P2 bundle. 
Okay, so then, then so corresponding to these two maps, I, ex I expect the following uh, So depending on the parameter Q, some you get some when the Keller class is closer, closer to the Keller class on X or closer to the Keller class on pullback from P2, you can get two pictures. One is phi picture that is something like this. So I have the composition of quantum cohomology like this. So here you see the P4, is the blow down and the uh, 2P1, which is a blow up center. This is the pi picture. And the pi picture will be like this. I, I, I see three copies, three copies of quantum cohomology of Okay. And recently I, I so, so I have been working on this five picture for some time for a uh, toric blow up, uh, weighted blow up of toric orifice. I see that this kind of picture and this induces uh, semi orthogonal decomposition of topological K group. That's something I checked uh, some three years ago. And recently I studied this five picture and I got the following result. So, Right. It's total and uh, let B be an X combo. Whatever the X combo. Then the quantum D module of projective bundle will be direct sum of quantum D module. R copy where R is around. So um, oh, maybe I, I should say this is completed in C. So this is a generalization. In, in, this, in this example, you can compute everything by hand. It just decomposes like this. But uh, this is a generalization of this example. And maybe I hope that this will be lifted to a semi orthogonal decomposition of K groups, but I haven't checked that. We haven't checked that yet. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for the beautiful lecture. Um, and again, if anyone has questions, please reach out to the speaker by email. Um, and then the next, next talk in this room will begin